Alex, uh, literally all my life I've been obsessed by the question of why there's anything at all. Um, and you've addressed certainly one of the subset questions and why this universe, how, how this universe can emerge li literally from the, 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 the nothingness of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, the laws of physics. How does that occur and what is the deep significance of that? Um, the uh, uh, if, if the universe uh, con uh, has some matter content and it has space and time, so the question is how all this came into being. Um, and uh, you could think that uh, it's impossible for the universe originate out of uh, the state with no universe simply because of energy conservation. Um, matter has positive energy and uh, that is conserved. This is one of the fundamental laws of nature. Um, however, uh, another fundamental fact is that the energy of gravitational field is negative. And uh, if you have a closed universe, that is the universe such that the space closes on itself, uh, just like, the, uh, in a, like a sphere, uh, then you can show that in such a universe the negative energy of gravity exactly compensates the positive energy of matter. So the total energy of such a universe is zero. Uh, and other uh, quantities that are conserved, like electric charge for example, you can also show that they must be zero. Like if you put a positive charge in this spherical universe, you can follow the line of electric force and they have to converge on another side and have a negative charge. So the total charge of a closed universe must be zero. Then, if all conserved quantities in such a universe are equal to zero, uh, then there is uh, no conservation law forbids creation of such a universe out of nothing, out of state where there is no matter, no space, and no time. Um, and in quantum mechanics, anything that is not forbidden by conservation laws happens with some probability. Uh, so that's basically why uh, a closed universe can spontaneously nucleate in quantum theory of gravity. Uh, and in fact there is an elegant mathematical description of this process where you can try to uh, do a calculation to, uh, and try to uh, figure out what the initial state of the universe is most likely to be in when it nucleates. And how does quantum tunneling uh, relate to that? Um, the, uh, if, you, if you consider a universe uh, uh, filled with some, well, I should say that uh, if you, even if you don't have any matter in the usual sense, uh, like particles and so forth, there is still vacuum. And for physicists, vacuum is a, uh, is a state which has energy and pressure. Uh, we live in a vacuum with a particularly low energy, but still non-zero. Uh, but uh, there are other vacua which have high energy, and that's presumably the vacuum that drove inflationary expansion in the early history of the universe. Mm. So when this closed universe forms, it is filled with one of these vacua. Um, and if you uh, solve the uh, Einstein's equations for a universe filled with vacuum, you discover that it, uh, it describes a contracting and re-expanding universe. It kind of bounces at some small size. It cannot go smaller than that size. So that, that is classically forbidden according to classical Einstein's equations. However, in quantum mechanics, uh, uh, things that are classically forbidden by energy barriers can happen by tunneling through energy barrier. So if you have a universe of zero size, there is no universe at all, that can tunnel through energy barrier to this minimum size and start expanding. So in this classical solution of contracting and re-expanding universe, only the expanding part exists. And uh, before that, you can have tunneling. So quantum mechanics gets you from zero to this small size, and once you get to this small size, then you're able to, to, to use general relativity and Einstein theory to, to generate all the rest. Right. Now, this is remarkable and, and awesome. 
Uh, but it is not something from nothing because you're starting with the laws of quantum physics, you're starting with the laws of general relativity. I mean, there's a lot of somethings there. This vacuum you talk about, as you said, is, is, is pulsing with energy and fluctuations and pressure and all sorts of things. I mean, there's a lot there. That's true, but uh, I'm not starting with the vacuum, right? Vacuum is what comes out of it. So uh, what I'm starting with are indeed the laws of physics, of general relativity and quantum mechanics. And uh, of course, uh, and these laws are assumed to exist in some sense, in some platonic sense, <laughs> Uh, even prior to the universe, although prior I should put in quotation yeah. marks because there is no time. Um, uh, and the question, uh, of course, is an extremely intriguing question of why these laws, who gives the laws, um, it's uh, a deep mystery and um, uh, I don't have much to say about that. I would like to. <laughs>